How many people we have online? I don't think we have quite a few online, I hope. I hope so, yeah. <clears throat> good, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, we're going to begin. Welcome all of you, those who are in the auditorium and those who are uh, uh, online. It's, uh, it is a pleasure to welcome Jose Bagagna, a distinct, distinguished traditional architect uh, from Portugal, more precisely from the great city of Coimbra, one of the sites of the, one of the oldest universities in the world. Jose is the managing partner of his firm, Jose Bagagna Arquitectos. He studied architecture at Porto, and then in Lisbon, and then he received his PhD in architecture from, in San Sebastian, from the University of the Basque Country. Following that, he taught, he practiced and taught architecture for a number of years at the Portuguese Catholic University, both at their campus in Viseu as well as their campus in, in Lisbon. He is the founder of the Portuguese chapter of Intbau, and he is the co-founder of the Council for European Urbanism. In 2011, he won the European Prize for the Reconstruction of the City, otherwise known as the Philippe Rotier Prize. And in 2017, he received the Rafael Manzano Prize, a prize that is dedicated to traditional architecture and urbanism within the Iberian Peninsula. It is always a pleasure to welcome a friend of the school, but please give a warm welcome to José Bagania. Thank you so much, Samir, for the kind words. Uh, thank you to the School of Architecture of Notre Dame. Uh, it's an honor to be here in this great school. Um, well, uh, for us European, this is something really amazing because, um, as you probably know, this is something very rare. A school like this simply doesn't exist in Europe. Uh, a place where you can learn traditional architecture, both classical and vernacular, as you learn here, it's something, hmm, I wouldn't say that doesn't exist, but it's very, very rare. So it's a, a great pleasure and it's never too much to thank you for the invitation. Well, uh, I would start by I will show you very quickly my work. I, I am going to show you mainly architecture, not urban planning, but architecture, buildings, from the most simple ones to the most elaborated, a uh, little bit of everything in the countryside, in the urban context. Uh, so I'll go fast and try to show you, to give a good idea of the, the work that we do in our office. So, um, first, because perhaps no one, uh, and not everybody knows where Portugal is exactly. We are in America, so and in another <laughs> continent. I come from this galaxy here. It's not Corcoran or something, it's Europe. It's the Western side of Europe, the most Western country in Europe. Portugal, which is included in the Iberia, Iberian Peninsula. And this country, which, uh, which is a tiny country, it has 10 million inhabitants. Um, well, uh, and I will focus very much on this aspect of uh, region, the, 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 the aspect of context, which is very important in my work. So being a tiny country, it's a country which has great difference from the north to the south. Um, uh, there's uh, an influence of the Atlantic Ocean, but also an influence of the Mediterranean uh, culture. So we also have the two archipelagos, Açores and Madeira, but we'll focus uh, on the continental territory the north and the south, the difference of the north and the, the south. The north being a more rough territory with mountains and granite stone and schist stone, where you can find beautiful villages with these materials. 
um, you see always a much more uh, uh, accidental um, territory. But also in the cities of the northern Portugal, like Porto, for instance, where you find the granite stone present in the uh, more uh, uh, in the churches and in the in the palaces, like this splendid church um, of the 18th century, a Baroque church of Nicolau Nazoni in the city of Porto, or this other palace in the city of Vila Real, in, um, also in the northern Portugal. But when we move south, we see a completely different world, which is the world of the lime, of the sandstone, of the limestone, of the clay, and of the lime, especially in contrast with these materials. And you see these magnificent white villages, which are so beautiful. So it's a completely different world. You see some examples of the Alentejo, which is a southern province of the Portuguese territory, also in more arid uh, buildings like churches and palaces. We see the presence of the lime in contrast with the, the limestone, or sometimes also the granite stone, which is more rare, but exists too or this other aspect which is quite uh, peculiar because even the great movements of architecture in time like the gothic for instance takes a different shape in these regions he adapts uh, uh, to the material to the to, to the way of building of the, the different regions so you compare this kind of church with the one we saw in port two different completely different worlds so i would start by showing some works i did in a rural context uh, in this southern province of uh, portugal the alentejo and i will run a little bit fast i will show a little bit of everything this is a single family house in a, in a property, a rural property in, the, in Alvito, a little town of Alentejo. It's a house with a U shape, rooms for one side, living room for the other, like this. It's a completely new house. We were restrained to, uh, um, we couldn't occupy um, any place else but that one. To, to put the house. This is the final result. It's a house where we use the local materials, again, the clay, the bricks, the, the schist stone, the, the, the tiles, and also these pigments that we add to the clay, uh, to the lime, uh, and gives these fantastic colors, the yellows, the blues, the reds, sometimes even the dark. So it's a, a family house that, well, it has a very uh, simple program. And you see, we also use the azulejos, the, 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 the windows and doors made of wood. The above the bovedash and the and, and the ceilings are made with local uh, materials too, with little sable slabs of clay or with these tiny uh, bricks that makes these vaults, arches. So it's a traditional way of building that we still have in this region of Portugal. All these elements that you see are elements present in the local architecture. And we move to another one, which is a production farm. They produce olive oil here. So you'll see in this um, uh, gather of buildings, 
things that serve for the production and others that serve for housing. This, for instance, is the place where they do, it's the mill where they do the, the olive oil. It has this kind of little tower which already has its belt, belt when, when its bell when we did the photo, the bell was not there yet, but now it is. The bell now is merely decorative, but in time it, it was used for uh, calling people for uh, lunchtime or mark the, the hours of the, the several work tasks. So it's something that the owner wanted to keep and we designed it. It's all new, except these house that had some ruins that we took and we integrated always combining these local materials with in different shapes and forms um, I, I, I call your attention for the presence of the chimney, which is a, a, a composition element always present in this architecture in the Alentejo. Well, the use of the traditional materials again in everything, even the tiles are that we use in kitchens, for instance, or in bathrooms are, are tiles which are made in um, traditional uh, craftsmen. The roofs are made with wood, with a wood structure. The chimney, which is very important in Alentejo, in, in time it was the, well, the center place of the house where everything happened. People got warm here because in the winter the Alentejo is really cold and in and they used to to cook also here so all the family gather around the chimney it's a very important element and we moved to another completely different uh, project always in the Alentejo a place that perhaps one or two of you could know because we made the summer school right there it's Mervão it's one of our Intbau summer schools. And it's um, a property that has several little houses. And this main one, which also was a meal for olive oil. And the owner decided to do a, a, a touristic um, complex, transforming the meal in the um, central building. Uh, with the restaurant and reception, etc. And then all the little houses were restored and modified in order to accommodate the, the apartments for the tourists. The several ones, as you see, always the same language, the same materials. Even the use of these decorative elements, which are very naive, but are very much present in the local vernacular architecture. So these are the several houses. It's called the seven farms. So there are seven little, little houses. You see the importance of the chimney in the composition and the use of the tiles and all the local materials like this. Another one which is completely new in Montemor and at the city of Central Alentejo, uh, city, well, town of the Central Alentejo. Um, that element, that little tower there, it's very also um, common in this type of architecture, which is a very simple architecture, clean, white, uh, without many windows, many, uh, well, are very simple volumes. So we did this sort of L-shaped 
building also with the, the rooms and bathrooms and well all the elements of the modern living of the way as we live today it's perfectly compatible with this kind of system of building and this kind of materials some of the drawings we did to present to the to our client and then the final result which is this beautiful house these are more recent photos so the the green is much more uh, has grown much more also in the interior the use of the of the clay and of the lime the wood on the on the windows and in the roofs and the use of these tiles which are produced in local uh, craftsmen everything very open it's these are spaces with, which are very fluid in the space we are not that much rigorous uh, uh, we are more open to innovation to in, invent things and use the space in a more um, let's say free way but we combine it with this uh, construction systems this other one also in the Alentejo, there was, um, well, this element here existed. It was pretty much ruined, but we added everything else and we restored that tower. This is the head of uh, agriculture property where they do a delicious wine. Um, so this is the owner's house and it has this area for rooms this area for i'm sorry this area for kitchens and dining rooms in these living rooms you see everything very open and some of the sketches i did for detailing uh, some aspects of the project to our clients and then the final result which is this very organic set of simple volumes with this reverberation of the lime which is something fantastic with the sun it gives this texture which is so beautiful and it's a great material it's something one of the best materials i know you simply melt the stone and then you put it again in the walls in the form of a sort of uh, plaster no some aspects of the house in the interior again the arches the uh, the, the structure of the roofs made with uh, wood arches vaults this sort of free way of using the space uh, which is not so mm, common perhaps but we decide to add to, to our uh, houses this is an aspect of the uh, cellar which had no bottles yet it's the private cellar of the owner now it's full of bottles delicious wine now this is another thing in Alentejo in the in the center of a town which is Alandroal it was a former house where one of our last kings Carlos used to stay when he when he went to Ant in this region so this was a place to rest and to stay on his Antings and it was in a very bad shape and we transformed it in a doesn't go doesn't move please oh it's okay it's okay so we transformed it in a hotel 
small hotel. Again, the use of these materials, the clay, the mix of the pigments. Uh, this, this is coal char that is mixed with the lime and gives these grays more dark, more light. Very organic. And also this one that I did for an ankle. Well, also with a vine. Very simple house. And this is the final result. See these splendid uh, chimneys. One of the things that I do is that I challenge the, the workers to do their own chimneys. And they, they do a sort of um, contest, uh, which chimney could be more beautiful. So it couldn't be more vernacular. This is one of the last projects we are working on, a little uh, further south already in the province of Algarve. We are completing uh, a little village. This would be the end of the of the of the village. With these tiny houses, always very simple. And now we move to another type of buildings, which are uh, what we call in Portuguese, the solar, which is the manor house of the country properties. Um, it's not a palace, but it's a, a good house, let's say. So uh, it's several places of Portugal. This one I did it a long time ago. It has uh, these two buildings that form a patio together with the portico, with the stairs and the fountain. There it is. Of course, here we already see the influence of some classical elements together with the vernacular in a reinterpretation of the classic, which is very local, and it uh, varies from region to region. It's, it's an aspect that we pay very much attention. It's to get to learn of the region where we are, what is, is its culture, its way of building. Um, we need to, well, to dive uh, on the place and get to know it as much as we can in order to design the buildings that we then build. The interior is a little bit, it's not so vernacular. It has already these ceilings made in chestnut wood and there's the presence of several uh, trophies of hunting because the owner is a, uh, it's one of his passions is the hunt. Well, it's what it is. <laughs> and this one that I did for my father near Viseu, a place where we had a very good school of architecture that unfortunately closed. Um, it's north, so there's the granite stone. It's also a very simple house. My father was a, a, a doctor, a medic doctor uh, in Coimbra, and this was his refuge. So when he wanted to be away of the stress of the life and death of his profession, he used to come here and do something on the earth, some agriculture, very simple things. And he also used to do some wine. His white wine was quite good. <clears throat> Always the use of the traditional materials of these regions 
the wood, the stone, the, the tiles, traditional tiles. And you see, you can design this in a way which is traditional, but as always, perhaps a, a, a new touch or something like that, that can differentiate. And finally, this house that I, uh, we worked mainly in the interiors because it was quite uh, destroyed for a friend, also very near Viseu. It's a very nice place to visit, this town, Santar. It has very good houses to visit in gardens, beautiful gardens. So we mainly worked on redoing the ceilings. We did these new ceilings in wood. It's a very um, traditional way of doing the ceilings in Portuguese traditional architecture. So it's all new. So if you want to open a, a room to make it wider, how can we do it and still look traditional? So we can do things like this, you know, you see here. Or take advantage of attic to make a, a good a good a good room. Now we came south again to one that is finished, but the garden is not ready yet, so it has this unfinished look. Uh, the owner has uh, a taste for classical architect architecture and here and there he wants to put something or a cupola or a thermal window. Uh, some here and then there are some elements that transport you to that kind of architecture. Again, in the interior, and this is his library. and another tiny house that we arrange for a friend using all these systems which are traditional, made in wood. This one we are working on right now, it's in Cascais, the place where I live and I work right now, uh, very near Lisbon. It's an original house of the of 1900 1900 okay <laughs> so that we enlarge and modify a little bit uh, getting the the original uh, architecture elements of composition etc so here we are. A Brazilian client. And this one, which is not made yet, we are waiting for some proposals for the contractors to see if you can start. So I just show the drawings. It's a very interesting tiny house in the northern, northern Portugal made with stone uh, that includes a chapel. And now we move to urban context, big city, Lisbon, for instance. OK, so a residential condominium in the central Lisbon that we took a old building, also in not so good shape, and we moved it up as the neighbor buildings were much taller so there was a will of composing the, fr the front of the street but we wanted to use the same architecture that was present in the uh, original building these are some of the sketches we did and this is the result of the project using these magnificent stucco ceilings and elements which are very characteristic of these buildings uh, in Lisbon of, of this of this uh, age, uh, nine, uh, fi the final years of the 19th century. And another one which is going on now, which is a former, um, this building served for 
Um, it was created by the Queen Amelia, which was the wife of the King Carlos, one of the last, and she created it to give medic medicines, uh, remedies to the poor. So it was called dispensario, something you that could make sense at that time, beginning the first years of the 20th century, and it was completely abandoned. And it had a transformation in the 40s by a modernist architect called Carlos Ramos that simply destroyed the building in the interior. It took all the uh, decorative elements. It took, it has a patio, it had a patio with uh, steel columns that were beautiful and that just disappeared and were substituted by uh, concrete uh, pillars. So we tried to get back to put again some of his characteristics, original characteristics, in a modern condominium with all the comfort of the, 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 the apartments, with his inner patio. keeping the original architecture, the original design in everything that we uh, did. So we um, took the original idea of the uh, steel beams and steel pillars with a new design. And this some images of the interiors. Another one in Lisbon also, which we did redone within the 18th century, uh, very characteristic style of buildings in Lisbon, that it's a typology that was used after the great work of the 18th century in Lisbon in 1755, uh, and which is commonly known as the Pombalin style. It's something that comes from our prime minister of that time was called the Marquise de Pombal. So it came the Pombalin style. So we used the Cartulario Pombalin, that means the lexicon of the 18th century of the reconstruction of the building of the Lisbon to redesign these facades of this building and the form of his uh, roofs. Now, uh, a more public building, if you can say so, um, it's uh, a building that we did for the medical um, college of, of Portugal. Uh, so it's an institution, a state institution, and it's something that, well, there are as three buildings which are linked to each other by bridges and passages. This one here is what existed. This was based in ruins and we just add the shapes and we made it completely new. It was in this, the main building was like this. So it was impossible to restore. It was very, very bad shape. And like this. So we decided to demolish it and reconstruct it as it was exactly. We had a very strong opposition from our colleagues of the local municipality that uh, were saying that, that you cannot do, that is uh, a crime, you cannot, uh, uh, well, go against the, sto the history. So if you want to make something new, it must be clearly new. Well, and the mayor didn't believe them and believed in me, fortunately. So we did reconstruct the building as it was exactly. There's his presence in the in in the city, which is quite important, and it's a place for retired doctors, play, uh, doctors with some difficulty 
uh, um, let's say, or moving, or uh, people that need assistance. So these are the new buildings, which are which have elements which are inspired in local architecture. A little bit reinvented. The, the different buildings are linked by these arches and passages. Also, these ramps that we need to insert to solve uh, accessibility issues. So there's a combination of more, let's say, mm, modern uh, elements, but inspired in the old elements you see here in these windows, for instance, which is a sort of typology that is quite present in the local architecture. And the use of the traditional materials everywhere, the cement tiles, which are made in crafts uh, of the area, and the use of, of the of the of the wood too. So this is a very recent opened uh, new little hotel in Figueira de Foz, which is a town near my hometown Coimbra, that we completely restore. It was like this. And this is the final result. So restoration project, very simple one. Another one, which was a great challenge because this building was completely destroyed inside, but completely, it's a very important 18th century building in the, one of the most important um, squares in Lisbon, which is the Rousseau, this is the downtown Lisbon, reconstructed after the great earthquake. That's one of the main piazzas, and this is the, the most important one. And the building is over there. And it includes that passage that you just saw, which links to the street. So these are several plans of the interior. These are apartments, housing apartments two bedrooms, three bedrooms. And this is the arch that we conserved. And this is the final result in the interior. Everything was redone with the same uh, construction materials, which are wood mainly combined with uh, clay and lime. Well, and this other one, again, the 18th century Lisbon style in this uh, housing building, which has this U shape forming a patio very near. This is the, our, uh, ancient art museum of Lisbon. It's a very good museum. So it's a very good place in real estate terms in Lisbon. Uh, so this, this was the state of the, of the building when we took it. And this is how it stayed after our intervention. We tried to make it not as a, only a single building, but we tried to divide it in three buildings together uh, be, and, and try to like this to make it more according with the urban typology of this neighborhood, which has not a big palace, but this uh, succession of uh, buildings one after the other. This is a very characteristic roof of, the, of this um, era, uh, which is the mansard roof. OK. 
comes from a French architect that also worked in the reconstruction of Lisbon. Some images of the patio. This is a project of, a, it's not mine, it's from a landscape architect that was part of the team. Some details. And finally, one or two projects, which are very simple projects of um, intervening in very simple buildings in, in the city, which are like this one with no interest. This is a um, 1950 building, which is a poor building, and we try to, to make something out of it. So kind of simple interventions, but that can help to change a lot. Or this one from the 40s that we try to give it, well, something more to add some more joy in these facades. And finally, some work in progress, more uh, housing in the Alentejo, like this one in Montserrat, or this other one in Alandrawal, or this one that we are doing to a big uh, wine company, which will be a cultural center, in, also in Montserrat. So our projects going on right now. This is another house for a farm in Alvito. Another one also in Alandrual, very rural context in the province of Alentejo, as we did just now. So these are all projects that we have right now. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. We are going to take some questions. Okay. If you have questions, please call for Professor Miranda. In the north and also, I guess, in the buildings in the south, um, how do you deal with the weather and how, what are the systems that go inside your building? Because we talk about that a lot in class and how to insert that into a building that's precedent, doesn't have it. Okay, so you're talking about thermal insulation and things like that. Well, we use, there are some fantastic materials like the cork, for instance, that you can use. And when you use those ceilings that you saw in wood, after that you can use uh, thick, um, what do you say that, uh, thick elements in cork. Um, and then after that, you have a sort of um, under tile element, which allows you to defend the cork from the water. And then finally, the tiles. So this, depending of the local where you are, it can be thicker or not so thick, but you must calculate it and to have the proper insulation. In the walls, it's a question of mass. So you can add more mass, less mass, more brick, less brick. And in the windows, we use uh, wood windows, which but but that have double win double gl glasses, and they have all the let's say more up to date systems to uh, isolate the, the houses. But it's basically that, okay. And we do it that every we do that everywhere because the Alentejo also it can make. Um, zero or even negative temperatures in the winter but in the summer it could go to 42 or something like that so there's a huge uh, temperature gap 
Yes, Lucien, please. Ventilation, you can open the window. So you have you can open the windows, and we also use a very ingenious system, which is a sort of little uh, grill. Uh, uh, you say that in English that you can control it. Okay, you can move it, and it's insert on the on the windows. It can be on the base or on the top or even on the side, depending. One thing about the chimney, because it's such a wonderful sculptural feature, but it's also you using. So what, what is it used for? Is it used also for ventilating the pipes and the bathroom, or is it just used for the heating and for the, for the well, fireplace? We have chimneys, as you saw, as you saw. We have lots of chimneys, and we also use a system that the engineers don't like very much. <clears throat> but we use it, it works. We, the tube goes to the roof, and then there's a tile which is a little bit uh, that exists, it's fabricated like that. And the tile goes sorts of the, of, of the, of the roof a little bit, and there's holes in it. So the roof, the, the tube comes and goes to there, so it can uh, ventilate like this. No. Then it's the two things that we use a lot. And sometimes we do even something that the engineers don't like at all, and I think it's not legal, which is the tubes come in the attic when the attic has no use at all, so it's a, a void, let's say, but it's ventilated. So the tubes get to that place and it's naturally ventilated. In time, it was very much used. But now the strict regulations that we have don't allow that. But we do it all the same, because it works. I very much enjoyed the variety of media that you use for graphic representation of the concepts. And I'm wondering if there's a sort of standard process of uh, you, your practice begins with graphite and then move into polychrome and then into the digital representation, or is there a natural variety per project, kind of whatever well, works? That's a very important question. That's the main issue. Each project is different from the other. Uh, and in each project, you must understand where you are. What's the place where you are? And what is, if you speak about color, you go around the place and you just make some drawings or take some pictures. Drawings is better, but sometimes you don't have time. So uh, you try to get as much as possible of each place where you are. That's our methodology. That's why we have so different buildings from place to place, from region to region. It's never the same thing. Because there are, as I said in the beginning, it's a very small country, but it has much differences, tiny differences, subtle differences. Even in a province like the Alentejo in the south, if you go north, you see, for instance, that the windows are a little bit larger because the climate is already not so mm, uh, so rigorous but you come as as you come to the south the windows start to shrink you know so these kind of things the chimneys are different from region to region when you design the the, the, the chimney you must pay attention you cannot put um, a chimney of the northern part of the Alentejo in the southern part, because everyone will look at it, oh, this guy doesn't know how to do it, you know. So you must really study the place, study the design, and it's something which is, well, I take pleasure doing that. I think it's one of the good things. It's when we go to the place and we try to learn about it and we speak to the people there, and we go have a glass of wine or something with the, with the guys that are there or uh, and, and we try to learn 
really what is about that place where you want to build. Please. Could you say something about your relationship with, uh, you mentioned that the uh, people who make the chimneys, but uh, the carpenters, uh, the, the plaster workers, right? How do you establish relationships with them? Very, how do you yeah, find very, people who have the skills? Yeah. Do you yourself have training in these fields? Yeah. Another very important question. I do work a lot with them. I don't pretend to know everything, never. And I learn a lot with them. So in these uh, different places, there's always the carpenter or the plaster or the whatever that knows how to do the things and knows how to do the things there or it's done there. So, of course, you try to take out of him what he has to give and combine it with your idea what you want to do it so it's a question of give and take you know and uh, between us and the craftsmen which is so rich there's wonderful people and it's a real pleasure to work with them it's, i respect a lot the craftsmen so they are what point is their feedback on your designs uh do you incorporate those concepts right how 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 does comments from them who have the manuals. Well, I think that, well, I have an idea when I begin of how it's done, of course. What comes is that when you go to the working site, the carpenter comes. You don't know, you could not know who he is. Perhaps you could, but sometimes you don't. So you start to talk with him and he looks at your drawings. Mm. Oh, architect, you did this like this, but usually I do it otherwise. Oh, OK, let's see. What do you do? Uh, and it's a, this dialogue that the final solution comes out. Sometimes this is very difficult because there are rigorous budgets and and we must do it without getting out of the budget. So, but we do it. It's usually we can, and sometimes we even save money to the <laughs> to, to clients. So, it's possible to do it. It's very good to do it. Because I think there are questions for you online. Okay. <clears throat> An online viewer. His name is Sam. He says, "Thank you for presenting your beautiful work." I was able to travel to Portugal recently and was enchanted by its architecture. Do you have a favorite Portuguese architect from history that we should know about and who we should learn from? Yes. Well, I should recommend, for instance, Raul Lino, which is an architect that did ex extraordinary buildings in the first half of the 20th century. It's an extraordinary architect. He should, uh, it's, it's, it's something, someone that I would strongly recommend. It's an inspiration for me. Eric? <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Um, so you were mentioning there is some pushback uh, with the facade. You had to tear down and build up. Yeah. And I was just curious to what's the present state of Portugal and their take on traditional architecture and how have you found that uh, changing over the time you've been practicing? Good question. Well, now it's getting better, but it was very difficult. As I said, when I showed you the building for the, the assisted residence for the doctors, well, there was a very strong opposition from, the, from my colleagues uh, because they still think that one cannot uh, reproduce a building as it was. Uh, it was more or less forbidden. It was something forbidden. You could not do that. And in a certain moment, when we were in a meeting on site, and the mayor, which was present, <clears throat> didn't realize that the building was so ruined. 
And when I showed him, I, I could put my arm on those cracks, or I took the, the mortar and it, it was like sand, you know? It was completely impossible to restore it. And the guy stood, oh, I didn't know this was in this shape. Uh, well, this is a disaster for me because the people in this town love this building. It has a huge history. So there are so, so many memories about it. If I destroy it, I will be hanged on a tree for sure. So uh, what can I do? And I told them again, rebuild it. And there were two girls, two young architects. Oh, I cannot do that. And the mayors cannot do that. Why? No, it's not. It's not correct. The, the well, the the charters that are uh, well understood, like the proper thing to do, etc. Don't allow that kind of thing. When you do, when you intervene in a building, if you must demolish it, there's no other way. You must do something modern, modern in a modernist way. And the guy, well, that's impossible. Can you do it? He pointed at me. Yes, I can. So let's do it. <laughs> and we did. Well, at that time, it was much like this. Now it's different because people started to realize that the, well, we had a, a huge fire in the center of Lisbon in the late 80s and this this fire uh, burned most of the well it was the heart of the city of lisbon and they called well sort of the star architect of the regime in portugal which is called Cisa Vieira, to rebuild this area and Cisa chose to rebuild it as it was he was very much criticized by doing it because everybody expected him to do a new, uh, uh, I don't know, pyrotechnic uh, something that would mark Lisbon. <laughs> and he chose to, to rebuild it. And well, since then, people started to accept uh, things in another way. And today it's possible to do it. Uh, sometimes when you don't know how it, how it was exactly, they still want to oblige you to reinvent something. But if you know what it was, if it's documented, it's perfectly possible nowadays, fortunately. The last question, Lucia. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted to ask you, so, um, because your work is really, really quite wonderful. And one thing I wonder where, how come that you always have these beautiful skies in your photos? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you must be well connected. <laughs> but also, I, what I really like what you do well, so the way you handle topography, but also a lot of your projects have a strong horizontality. That's something which is so difficult to make buildings which were just simple, with the same color, and which have this horizontality, and still have a great sense of identity, variety. So there's a, there's a kind of simplicity, but also a great complexity, and using very simple materials and very simple. Thank materials. you so much, Lucia. Yeah. Adapting so, to the topography and to the morphology, it's Something that I learned a lot with this architect that I, that I just mentioned, with Raulin, which is a master in doing it. It has magnificent buildings in a mountain with huge cliffs in Sintra, for instance, which are magnificently uh, adapted to the site, you know. So the idea is not to go against what you have, but try to use it use that difficulty, apparent difficulty, as an element for your creative, creative design. Instead of wanting to turn it down. Sorry? Raul, Raul, Lino. Lino. 
Very well. Thank you very much for your time.